We're going to start now with one of the most important topics regarding NumPy and it's actually going to take us a couple of lessons to introduce it completely because we know that sometimes it's confusing. It's actually kind of a, a new way of working for most of you. It's going to be at least if you are used to regular programming, uh, vectorized operations and then following up uh, Boolean arrays and masks and filters, they are all going to be kind of new. So we're going to take a couple of steps uh, to get it done and hopefully it's going to make a little bit more sense after these following lessons. So to get started, we're going to speak only about vectorized operations, which um, is just these operations that make sense mathematically speaking, just to put it simple, right? If you have two arrays, you create this operation A plus B, what it does, it adds both arrays element Per element, right? So it does uh, 0 plus 5, 1 plus 6, 2 plus 7, etc. It makes sense, right? It's kind of the, the, the most obvious and intuitive thing to do. Um, but to be honest, this is not what happens usually with programming. We're not, to what, we're not used to this sort of uh, process. So when you're using NumPy, you can pretty much have this uh, notion as, as the basic way of working. It's the default mode of operating with NumPy. Whenever you do uh, operations between multiple arrays, you can think about these operations in the more uh, intrinsic mathematical notion of it. So the new thing about this is that it's just one expression. You do A plus B and it gives you, again, the element-wise sum of all these elements. If you are used to the traditional programming, you know, for loops or, or like a, a more imperative sort of programming, you can think about these, op these operations as a regular for loop. So we are pretty much operating over each one of the elements, right? Extracting once at each one of these elements at a time and adding them up together. Again, of course, this is the preferred version because it's just one expression. And why do I say that it's not the standard way of working. Well, if you have two lists, right, two, two regular Python lists, not, not even arrays, and you do this plus sort of operation, what you actually get out is the concatenation of the lists. It's not, it's not the, the mathematical intrinsic, intrinsic notion of adding up the elements together. So to get started, again, it's just scratching the surface of all these topics, we are going to think about operations in arrays, right, in this mathematical way of thinking. We're going to keep extending it. What happens if we have, for example, a matrix, right? This matrix has four rows by three columns, and we try to do operations with this vector, which just has one row. It's a row vector, right? One row, three columns, one by three. If we perform this operation, what you're going to see is that it also has this concept of, in this case, doing row per row um, application of the operation. It's actually a broadcasting operation. What we have here is that this one to three, right, is applied to zero, zero, zero. So the result is one to three. Then we get one to three again, and it's summed to the second row. So now we have two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six. So again, it's this broadcasting rule. You're broadcasting these vector, right, in each one of these rows to get the final result. Okay, so far so good. This is the concept of a vectorized operation. I know it, it probably looks simple. This is a good thing. We will actually keep uh, extending it and you're going to see how important and useful it is for later. Um, so what happens when uh, these things don't kind of align? If I have these, uh, this matrix, which is two by three, and this vector, which is just one by two, there is no way of doing broadcasting here. So the, the, the NumPy is actually going to raise an error. And it's going to tell you exactly why it cannot perform this operation, right? The, the, the operation can, the NumPy cannot broadcast together these two arrays because the, the shapes are not compatible. Um, what else? What happens when we start working with scalars? And this is one 
broadcasting and vectorized operations make a lot more sense. So far, probably you haven't gotten these this need of creating operations between multiple arrays or lists. But something you're gonna see is that it's very common to do operations between arrays and scalars or just you know plain numbers like this array plus 10, this is a good example. It happens a lot that you have this array of data and you wanna perform a certain operation with just a scalar divide all by two, multiply everything by four, square all the elements, right? This operation with the whole array. And the idea is that, again, the vectorized operation, what it's going to do is it's going to pretty much do an element-wise addition, in this case, to each one of these elements right here. So you have 0 plus 10, 1 plus 10, 2 plus 10, etc., etc., etc. This is actually something that we have already incorporated with Python, which is the notion of list comprehensions, which is a, a big topic on its own. We can we actually have a couple of videos, go check them on YouTube about list comprehensions, functional programming, map operations, etc. But basically, this is what we do in Python when we need, right, this list comprehension, when we need this sort of functionality, applying a vectorized operation. So in NumPy, a vectorized op operation, it's pretty much a first class citizen. It's something very common and it's built into the core of it, but it's not the case of regular Python programming or actually other programming languages. It's a feature that is pretty much, I don't know, I'm not gonna say exclusive, but NumPy, uh, actually pays a lot of attention to it. Um, one more example, what happens if we have a list, I'm gonna just make it on the fly, I have a list range of five, and I show you this list, right? And I do L plus five plus 10, whatever, it's gonna fail, right? Actually, to, to kind of uh, make a second point of this notion that it's not so common in Python, it actually fails because Python doesn't, it, it says that it can't perform this operation with two types that are so different, a list and a regular number, an integer. Again, for NumPy, this is just a piece of cake. It's the regular vectorized operation that we can think, we can think of. So any other operation, again, mathematical operation you can think of, is already implemented with NumPy and Scalar. So we saw them with uh, other arrays, A plus B, and now we're seeing them with other scalars. There is a, a simple example here just for you to, to see how it works. Now, why is this so important? And now we're gonna get into these, this very important topic because these operators are just mathematical operators, right? Just plus, minus, times, uh, the power of, divided by, etc. But we also know that there are other operators that are Boolean operators, greater than something, low, less than something, equals to something else, right? So these are the Boolean operators we have. And, and the question is, what happens when we create this operation that combines with a Boolean operation, a NumPy array, and a scalar? Okay, that's what we're gonna see. As a spoiler, we know already that if we try to do any of these Boolean operations with a regular Python list, it will also fail, right? Again, Python, pure Python, can't combine just a list, in this case, any uh, collection, pure Python collection with a uh, scalar, it, they are not compatible. But with, with NumPy, we see that it, they are actually compatible and it's not just that they are actually compatible, there's actually a very interesting result right here. This plus, this greater than operation was also applied element by element, as we saw with the plus 10, on this original array. So we did, is 0 greater than 2? No. False. Is 1 greater than 2? No. False. 2, again, false. And then we have 3. Is 3 greater than 2? Yes, it's greater than 2, so we get a three uh, true value out, right? The same thing for equals, the same thing for any sort of Boolean operator that you can think of. So now, if you remember from our previous lessons with selection, you know that these were those Boolean selectors you might use. So we're gonna use them actually in a couple of lessons following up. Again, it's gonna be, I'm kind of spoiling it, but uh, 
we are going to be using these selectors here and there. Um, as you might know, we actually have a piece in our vlog about it. True and false values are basically integers internally. This, is, this might seem odd, but true and false values in Python are integers 0 and integer 1. All right? They are sim uh, symbolized with true and false, but internally they're pretty much integers. That means that you can actually ask for the total sum of this array, right? And you're going to get pretty much the list of, you're going to get, sorry, a count of how many true values you have, because each true sums adds one more to the one more unit to it and false, they are all zeros. So if you have certain condition, for example, you have a list of users and you want to check how many I don't know, passes a given condition, you express the condition with your Boolean operator, and then you can do a sum to get the total count out. All these operations with scalars, they all work also with multidimensional arrays. Okay, so following up, we will keep iterating on these vectorized operations. We're going to introduce Boolean arrays, masks, and many more things that are very important for NumPy.